This is the planet we share. Each week we travel above, below, and across its surface on a journey of discovery. This week, boldly exploring a new frontier. The rainforest canopy is finally within our grasp. In Malawi, killer crocs are on the loose. And daring conservationists try to save man we got him. and beast. And in Yellowstone, when trout spawn upstream, supper's on. This is Wild Chronicles. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium. Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson. When we take a close-up look at trees, it usually means we are face-to-face -face with the trunk. But there is a whole different world up there. An estimated 20 times more species than we originally thought live in the rainforest canopy. As we're about to see, one intrepid National Geographic researcher has discovered some amazing things in this previously hidden world. But to find her, the only way to go straight up. A combination slingshot fishing pole is ecologist Nalini Nakarni's own invention for gaining access to another world. Yes! The rainforest canopy is home to more living creatures than anywhere else on the face of the planet. Many are born here and will die here too, rarely, if ever, touching the ground. The canopy may be the last biological frontier on Earth. And Nalini is determined to uncover its secrets. For me, going up to the canopy to study is really about filling in our understanding of a piece of the forest that we don't know much about. But the draw is also one of beauty, the, the gorgeousness of the canopy, and um, I guess I have to say also kind of the spirituality of it. And it may be that one of these logs falling over knocked it out. Knocked it out. Nalini and her team have come to survey Cedar Flats part of the Great Washington Cascades in the southern part of Washington State. Some of these trees at the Pacific Northwest are a thousand years old. This forest, this old growth coniferous forest of the Pacific Northwest, has some of the largest specimens of trees anywhere in the world, some of the oldest trees anywhere in the world. Nearby is Mount St. Helens. And Nalini is looking specifically at how the volcano's 1980 eruption affected growth patterns. Her specialty are epiphytes, so-called air plants that live high above Earth. She has studied these intriguing plants all over the world. They are nurtured by tiny droplets of mist, and with each drop, they gather a bit of dust. Over time, the soil builds up into hanging gardens of the sky. At Cedar Flats, analysis has shown that ash from Mount St. Helens is still nourishing these specimens. these moss mats it was so cool what I saw was this layer of volcanic ash obvious look at that it's just so amazing so here's this sort of 
nutrient rich um, powdery material right on the branches itself and what I didn't realize was that this really did come from the volcanic blast back in 1980. Nalini believes her work here will help her understand the impact of climate change. Moss pulls carbon dioxide or so-called greenhouse gases from the atmosphere so if volcanic eruptions spur the growth of mosses, then these important plants may in turn help mitigate the greenhouse effect. Understanding the growth rates and the, and the uh, death rates of mosses is incredibly important in terms of understanding the global cycle of carbon around the world. And that, of course, relates to one of the most pressing environmental issues that, that humans face today, which is global climate change. <laughs> Did we move it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nalini's high-spirited National Geographic expedition at Cedar Flats is unique. Not only does it include first-class scientists, but also dancers, musicians. They are encouraged to use their observations of the forest canopy in their own work. There are two reasons why I bring artists out here. One of them, I think, is because they tend to have different perceptions than scientists do. They notice different things, and they can bring those things to our attention. It is sometimes dangerous work. But the need to go higher into the trees may be a part of our primordial makeup. You know, whenever I see a troop of monkeys going through the tropical rainforest where I work and they are just brachiating through the canopy and using their tails, I just feel so jealous that they can move around so easily and we're sort of stuck there with our, with our ropes and our lines. Modern technology is allowing even more researchers like Nalini to explore this frontier on Earth. The canopy may provide clues to climate change. It may provide us with the information needed to protect rare species. It may yield new medicines, a pharmaceutical gold mine. Our long ago ancestors once lived in the trees, but earthbound humans have only been able to look up to these heights and wonder. Now this ancient realm may be in our grasp once again. <laughs>